Attention, the following broadcast has been approved by Outcasted OC. Viewer discretion is advised. Incoming transmission in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. What's going on guys? Welcome back to NXT Review for this week. Outcasted in the building and this is Reese giving you a full on update of what is going on on NXT. Oh my god, what an absolutely amazing week we have got. Uh, I'm going to get straight into it. Before we do, I'm going to ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what you're seeing. But let's just get straight into it. And let's talk about the thing that everyone is talking about because it's the thing that's on everyone's mind. It's the thing that's on my mind. We'll get to the rest of the show later. But this is the most important bit, right? <laughs> Becky Lynch just won the NXT Women's Championship. Now, we'll go into the match later and we'll talk about what happened in the match later. But I just want to give my thoughts because I know there's some people who aren't very happy with it. There are some people who were, you know, over the over the moon with it. Um, right now, we've got Becky Lynch, who is officially now a Grand Slam champion in WWE. She's won all the titles. I believe that was the last um, women's version of a title that she could win the NXT Women's Championship. So now her and Seth are both Grand Slam champions. Um, I understand why people are mad about it. I actually, I really do. Um, me personally, um, I see this as more of a progression for Tiffany Stratton than um, a setback. Um, you've got someone here who clearly can have a great rivalry with her. I mean, I was watching this match and it really proves that Tiffany Stratton can go, like, you know, play with the big girls at this point. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if they moved them up, uh, moved her up to the main roster, um, at some point later on this year. Um, yeah, she didn't have much of a chance to let a title run, like, you know, blossom into anything very significant. But the fact is, they trust her enough to hold the NXT Women's Championship. Um, the fact that she was put in the ring with Becky Lynch in the first place should uh, say a lot, to be honest with you. You, you know, you've, you've got the man Becky Lynch, possibly the biggest women's wrestler of the past decade. Definitely the biggest women's wrestler WWE has on their cards at the moment. So it really says a lot to me that they trusted her to go in and have a great match with Becky Lynch, which she did, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, the vibe that I got from this match was it kind of felt like it could be a long-term rivalry, like not just for championships, not just for this year. More of a, I see this as kind of a, if they really wanted to, they could put this as like a Trish and Lita situation where like, you know, they was always going back to each other and fighting for different reasons. Um, they're always like present in each other's careers. That that really feels like something that could happen. Like Stone Cold and The Rock as well. Like you could use that as an example. These two had really nice chemistry in the ring, and I felt like um, just looking at them. I mean, because I've said for a long time that Tiffany Stratton is the next Charlotte Flair, and um, she's got the build for it. She's got the athleticism for it. She's got that natural charisma for it. Um, and Becky Lynch is Becky Lynch. And what else can you say about that? Um, but we'll talk more about this later on in the in the show. We will. Um, we will we will visit the match um, in its entirety. But first, let's uh, let's talk about what else happened on the card this week. Um, to start off, we um, had a recap from the week before, and it was basically showing what went down last week and what is to come this week on NXT. Um, it showed Carmelo Hayes obviously telling Wesley and Dragon you're going to have to fight it out for the number one contendership. It showed what Bron Breaker did to Von Wagner. Um, it wasn't very nice, obviously. Um, it was it was cool. It was very very cool. Um, and it also showed Tiffany Stratton being confronted by Becky Lynch on the screen. So it showed basically what we already knew, and it was just a recap on what was yet to come this week from NXT. First match of the night. First match of the night was an interesting one for me because I thought it would take place a little bit later on in the car, but it was a great way to open the show. Um, it was Wesley versus Ilya Dragunov. Like I just mentioned, the winner of this match goes on to face Carmelo Hayes at No Mercy for the NXT Championship. This match was really cool, mainly because I like the way that, I don't know if you guys noticed that Wesley kind of turned up the intensity for the match. Like, obviously, he is very high-flying, very in-your-face, fast, fast. But, like, he was, because he was in the ring with Ely Dragunov, he really turned up the pace. Um, he had a bit more of a, you know, sh shoot first, ask, quest ask questions later style. Um, he was the first one to throw a shot in the match. So that really says a lot about the mindset of Wesley going into this match and how much it meant to him in this match. This match ends with Ilya Dragunov going for the Torpedo Moscow. Um, and as he's running to give it, like Wesley hits him with the knee. Unfortunately for Wesley, this bounces Ilya Dragunov back up. And as Wesley falls, it hits him with an H-bomb. One, two, three. Ilya Dragunov is heading to No Mercy to face Carmelo Hayes for the NXT Championship. 
Um, Wesley looked very despondent outside the ring. He looked very, very sad. He starts walking off. Carmelo Hayes comes out on the ramp and just, you know, kind of stares Ilya Dragunov down and holds up the championship. So that's going to be the main event for No Mercy. I have a feeling Ilya is going to win the title. I think it's time for Ilya to win the title. And I think it's time for Carmelo Hayes, maybe, you know, to move up to the main roster or take a break. I, I don't know. But I think he's had a quite a great title run. And I think it's Ilya Dragunov's time, and I think he's the right person to drop it to. So I'm I'm all for this. After this match, we get another flashback, even though for some reason we've just seen it. We get another flashback to what happened to Von Wagner last week on NXT, where Bron Breaker dropped the stairs on his head. And we basically get like a bit of a flashback of what all the commentators said, etc. Um, after this, Vic Joseph uh, makes an apology for what he said on the, uh, you know, on the show as it was going off because he was so, uh, so shocked what was going on. We also see the aftermath of the black screen. We see Von Wagner getting put on a stretcher. We see Von Wagner um, getting taken to an ambulance. And we also get an update on his medical um, status. Um, apparently, he has a minor skull fracture. He was able to get his head kind of out of the way, but not enough. But unfortunately, due to, you know, his past and like, you know, what we've learned in terms of the surgeries that he'd ha he's had on his head, uh, um, like when he was a child and as he was growing up, and um, there is no real telling what's going to happen to Von Wagner um, after this point. Um, continuing what happened to Von Wagner, we'd now get a Baron Corbin segment. He comes out and explains that he was sat there last week when it all went down. And it was crazy. He's never seen anything like it in the business. Um, he, he, he was he was shocked by it. And he knows something for sure that Von Wagner will never be the same again. He then goes out to call out Bron Breaker. Bron Breaker comes down um, to the ramp. Baron Corbin says, "Whoa, that's far enough. You know, you know, you don't need to come any further than that." After what you did last week, after dropping the stairs, and like you know what happened to Von Wagner, there's one thing I've got to say to you, Bron Breaker. And then he says, "I loved it. I thought it was amazing. I thought it was great." Like, you know, all the ambulances everywhere, all the crew staff were everywhere. Everyone was, everyone was there. It was, it was chaotic. It was, it was crazy. I didn't think you were going to do it. I thought he was going to drop the stairs and then you had the stairs and then you actually did it. I thought uh, Baron Corbin's uh, reaction to this was very funny. But what Bron Breaker did was really interesting to me. He goes, he's like, he's laughing with Corbin and he goes, haha, idiot. I didn't do it for you. I didn't do it for your approval or to gain your respect. I did it because Bron, yeah, because Von Wagner put me through a table. So I ended his career. And Corbin's like, well, you know, if you want to have that attitude, I was actually coming out to uh, even offer to pay for you, fine. But you've got a lot to learn. I'm not Von Wagner. And he, and he slaps him and Bron Breaker pushes him. They got, they, they're about to get into a scuffle, but everyone breaks it up. But during this segment, Bron Breaker challenges Baron Corbin to a match at no mercy. So that's going to be really interesting. I can't wait to see that. I can't wait to see what's going to happen with Von Wagner. Um, when he's going to come back, obviously he will come back, but I also can't wait to see the gimmick that he's going to come back with. Is he going to come back with kind of like a Kane sort of vibe, like, you know, from the 90s where he's wearing a mask because his face is all messed up? That'd be kind of cool. I wouldn't mind seeing that, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know how long he's going to be out for, um, but it, it is an interesting road to go down. I think this is the best thing to do. I don't know what Bron Breaker is going to do after the Baron Corbin match, but I know that Baron Corbin's got a lot to do in NXT. I think he is still interesting. He's got a great new theme song, by the way, which I absolutely love. And Von, Wag uh, Von Wagner, this is an opportunity for him to come back with a new character. I did like the table stuff that he was doing, but this is this is um, a lot to build on. And I think, obviously, his first rival when he come back, uh, comes back is going to be Bron Breaker. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Um, after this, I'm going to talk about this all, all at the same time. So uh, we've been seeing for a couple of weeks that Miles Bourne's been getting beat up by Kemp and Gulak and Dempsey. You know, in the training facility to kind of, you know, it's kind of get built up and like, you know, you need to train, you need to um, earn your stripes, you know, rookie, etc. and stuff like that. But then Fallon Henley came and offered him a place in this six man tag team match to team up with uh, Josh Briggs and Brooks Jensen this week, which Gulak and Dempsey weren't very happy about, obviously. Um, it then comes to this match this week and obviously it's uh, Drew Gulak, uh, Charlie Dempsey and Damon Kemp versus Miles Bourne. Uh, Josh Briggs and Brooks Jensen. It ends up being an absolute brawl outside, but while this is going on, Miles Bourne throws, I believe it's Josh Briggs, into, into uh, the post, throws him back in the ring and betrays Josh Briggs and Brooks Jensen so that Damon Kemp and everyone can pick up the victory. He then celebrates in the ring with them all. And I do want to say, 
Miles Bourne's talented. I, I, I was watching him in the ring, and he was, I, I want to see more of him. I thought it was very impressive what he was able to do. Like, I've not seen a lot of him, but what I've seen of him now makes me want to see more of him, if that makes sense. It makes sense in my head. <laughs> let me know what you think in the comments of Miles Bourne. That's the first time I've asked you to let me know in the comments. You just never do leave comments. It's fine. I understand. You don't want to talk to me. But if you do want to tell me what Miles Bourne... What you think of Miles Bourne? Like, you know, let, let me know and we can, you know, we can have a conversation about it. Okay. Next, we go backstage to a Chase U segment where after the lecture talking about, um, you know, uh, basically Andre Chase is saying, you know, make sure you watch the Tiffany Stratton and Becky Lynch and take notes tonight. What's going to happen there? Um, You get a segment here where he's kind of worried about Thea Hale. He doesn't know what's going on with it. So he asked Duke Hudson, uh, I said that name really weird, Duke Hudson, to check on Thea Hale. He goes to text her, but it looks like um, she has blocked his number, which is a shame. So, you know, Chase, you were very, very concerned about him. Um, what's going on with Thea Hale and JC Jane. We then cut to Thea Hale and JC Jane, where JC's asking, you know, Thea, are you okay? And obviously on the other side, she's just blocked uh, the number of Duke Hudson. So she's like, yeah, I am now. I should have done it a long time ago. Two lads come over to talk to JC and Thea. Uh, JC says, oh, I took I took Thea Hale out for, for a birthday. And they start laughing at him, saying, you know, why are you taking kids out? You know, like, I, I didn't know you hung around with children. And then JC Jane and Thea Hale beat up <laughs> the two guys and they run away. Thea Hale turns around to JC Jane and says, you know what, we need to go shopping this week because I'm tired of looking like this. So Thea Hale is going down the darker, darker road. Still, like, uh, JC Jane has got her claws synced into J uh, Thea Hale. So it's going to be interesting to see where Thea Hale is going to go from here. Like, Is she eventually going to have, like, a bit of a redemption arc where she's going to go back to chase you? Or is she going to turn full heel, baby, and hang around with JC Jane? That's going to be interesting to see. But I really love this segment. I always love the Chase U segments, and I'm always interested to see what Thea Hale's going on, like what's going on in her life. Uh, I love I love Chase U storylines. I think they're always great. And this like updating character from Thea Hale is just interesting to see. Speaking of something that's not very interesting to see, uh, we now go to uh, Lyra Valkyria versus Dana Brooke with Kalani Jordan in uh, Dana Brooke's corner. Um I don't really want to talk about this match because nothing really happened. Both of them looked all right in the ring. Lyra Valkyria carried most of this match, in my opinion. But Dana Brooke was Dana Brooke in this match. Um, after Lyra Valkyria picks up the victory, Kalani Jordan gets in the ring and goes to console Dana Brooke about the loss. Obviously, Lyra Valkyria is still in the ring and Dana Brooke throws another tantrum because she still thinks that Lyra is trying to steal Kalani off of Dana Brooke. Um, there was conversations on commentary about, like, do you think there's a bit of a, pro a professional jealousy from Dana Brooke towards uh, uh, Kalani Jordan because people see her as a big, big talent and, you know, maybe she's rising in the ranks and Dana Brooke isn't really needed anymore for her. That's what people are saying. So th the whole professional jealousy storyline for me um, it is, it is a step in the right direction for Kalani Jordan. Not sure what it does for Dana Brooke. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't care about Dana Brooke. I really don't. I'm sorry. I can't pretend to care. I care, I care about Kalani Jordan, I suppose, but, you know, this, it, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. I just want to do mention, after this match, we get an announcement that the Women's Breakout Tournament is coming back. Officially, we don't get any participants, but we, we know it's coming back and we know what happened last year, um, where Roxanne Perez won it. So, interestingly enough, she's actually talking about this backstage a little bit later on. And then it's confronted by Lola Vice, who says she is breaking up the locker room and she wants a smoke basically next week. So next week we get Roxanne Perez versus Lola Vice. And Roxanne Perez is talking about the women's breakout tournament and she's saying, you know, look what it did for my career. She's bigging it up. And to be fair, it did do a lot for her career. You know, she went on to become the Iron Survivor. She then become women's champion. So yeah, it did, it did a lot for her career. And Lola Vice for me, should be the next winner of the Women's Breakout Tournament. Apparently, she's been entered into it. That's the only person that I've heard about so far. So I'm interested in seeing what's going on there. And I'm actually interested in seeing the Roxanne Perez-Lola match next week because I like Lola Vice in the ring. I think I think she's got a lot to go at. And, you know, Roxanne isn't bad herself. I, I, give her a lot of, I give her a lot of shit, but she is pretty decent in the ring. We then go backstage, uh, or so we should I say we stay backstage, where Eddie is talking about his rivalry with Dijak and how Dijak always wins because he always has to, you know, take the shortcut. He either hits him with a bell or, like, he gets disqualified, or you know, etc. Um, he, he's, he's having this interview and saying, you know, it's not over between us two. 
he then um, turns around and sees that there's a TV on where Dijak is in Eddie Thorpe's, you know, special place. Um, where he goes to meditate and connect with the spirits and stuff. And then he starts like whipping a belt off his like, is it a tree or something? That, like, I don't know what this was. It made Dijak look so weird. Like, honestly, it made him look so strange, man. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I am interested in seeing a match game between these two. Don't get me wrong. But it, it, it was odd. That, that, to, to say the least, it was odd. So, but if this leads to another, you know, match that between these two, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. We stay backstage again, guys, where Dominic Mysterio uh, confronts Carmelo Hayes and says, I like the way you dealt with your opponents for no mercy, the way you made them fight out. It was kind of like what I did, you know, how original. Melo says, oh, you want to talk about original? You know nothing about originality. And by the way, it was a fast count. I love how you kind of like ran away from the fact that uh, Dragon Lee beat you, and that's why you wanted uh, Mustafa Ali to win. Dominic Mysterio basically then goes on to say, listen, you said this was the A championship, which means I'm the A champion. Basically, Carmelo Hayes turns around and says, all right, we'll find out who is the A champion, because next week I'm challenging you to a match. So it's going to be the NXT champion Carmelo Hayes versus the North American champion Dominic Mysterio next week. And Dominic Mysterio ends his segment and goes, I'll talk to Mami. And Melo says, yeah, you go do that. <laughs> So that'd be a great match. I can't, I, I can't, I can't wait to see who is the A champ, should I say. Um, where are we at now? Oh, yes, we are finally talking about Becky Lynch and she says she is more hungry than ever. She is more fired up to be in NXT than she was when she first got here. No one saw her as a champion when she first went through. And who'd have thought that she'd be, go on to be Becky Two Belts, that she'd be the first winner of the first ever women's WrestleMania main event becoming that Becky Two Belts, becoming the man, becoming like who she is today. And like I say, she is more fired up than ever. Um, Kiana James also then comes and says, you know, we don't want you in NXT. I don't want you in NXT. And Becky Lynch says, well, I'll tell you what, if I win the uh, NXT championship, a uh, women's championship match tonight, you're going to be on my list. I'm going to be around NXT a lot more often. So prepare for that, which I'm down for. I'm down for Becky Lynch being on NXT more often. That'll be really, really cool. It not only creates new opportunities in NXT, it also opens up a spot on Monday Night Raw where someone can fill. Um, hopefully that being like maybe Shayna Baszler, maybe Zoe Stark, you know, maybe Tiffany Stratton. You know, like if she moves up that quickly, it might be her. We now get a Group A match in the NXT Heritage Cup tournament. It is Tyler Bate versus Axiom. And this might be the best match of the entire tournament. I thought this was really, really cool. Um, obviously, Axiom wants some more points. He's only got one at the moment because of the draw that he had. Tyler Bate is looking to get on the board because this is his first match. And basically, they're all trying to catch up to Joe Coffey. His Joe Coffey's killing it at the moment. Um, Joe Coffey's on like four points. And basically, if he wins the next match, I believe, he goes on to... Oh, no, sorry. Joe Coffey's in Group B. Um, it's I, I believe it's like Tazawa. I said, like the, the whole the whole tournament situation is really up in the I will I will get to the whole tournament thing. Basically, Axiom needs some um he needs some points because he's gonna fall behind. Because Pete Dunn, that's who it is. Sorry, that is who is in this tournament in this side of the bracket. It's Pete Dunn. My bad. My mistake, Aruni. Yeah, Pete Dunn is here as well talking about this NXT tournament, and he's saying, like, you know, he's gonna once and for all face Tyler Bate next week and if he, Pete Dunne does win that I believe he is at the top of the uh, at the top of the group A card because he uh, beat Axiom for, with the bitter end at the, in the very first match and obviously if he beats Tyler Bate here that's another that's another two points like four points for Pete Dunne and I believe yes he did I believe yes he had a time limit draw with that um with 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 um Axiom. I am so confused about this tournament, guys. You know what? I will ne next week is the most important bit, and I'll have all the stats there for you. But all I can say is it's it's going down. Like this is very, very close. I, I know more that's going on in group B than to do what's going on in group A. It's easier to catch up with in group B, to be honest, because group A is a mess. And it's a mess because Tyler Bate has this is his first match. For some reason, they've left it this long for Tyler Bate to have his first match. Um, like I say, though, it was probably the match of the tournament. Like, Tyler Bate and Axiom have great chemistry. Tyler Bate does end up coming out with the victory with the Tyler driver 97. Very, very cool to see Tyler Bate using that move on Axiom. I loved the ending of this match. 
I, I feel sorry for Axiom because I kind of wanted him to win Group A, and it looks like it, that's not going to happen, unfortunately. But it is what it is. You can't, you know, you can't have what you, you know, you can't always have what you want. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, like I was saying before, after this match, uh, Butch is talking about how it's going to be fight night and no one brings out the bruiser weight better than Tyler Bate. So he's going to find out next week because it's going to be him versus Tyler Bate in the Heritage Cup tournament. Um, I can't wait for that match. Uh, he, he, he goes on about his past. He goes about how Tyler Bate's first match at 15 years old was against du uh, Butch or Pete Dunne. Obviously, the NXT UK Championship Tournament. It was him versus Pete Dunne or Butch, whatever you want to call him. And then the match of the year at NXT TakeOver Chicago from 2018. Like, the rivalry between these two guys is amazing. And I cannot wait to see that match. So that, that might be match, one of the matches of the year if he, you know, if they let it go, that could be that could be a match of the year. And um, obviously, you'll find out my match of the year in the Outcasted podcast at the end of the year because we're going to be doing a end of year recap. So don't worry about that. We then go backstage where Joe Gacy is very despondent and he says how he appreciates Ava's commitment and loyalty. This tree is dying and it's rotted. Um, you know, Ava's trying to convince him, you know, it, it can be better. You know, Four Roots became two, but we're still here. And, you know, Joe, Co uh, Joe Gacy, sorry, not Joe Coffey, um, does not look happy, basically. He, he just doesn't, he, he looks, he looks very despondent. I'm very interested to see what's going to be happening with um, the schism. Are they going to be called the schism in the world? Or is it just Joe Gacy? Like, because it's not a faction anymore. Because I, I believe the GYV, or whatever you want to call them, the Dyad, they've gone. Like, they've completely gone. So th this is going to be interesting to see what's going to happen with Joe Gacy. Because I want I want something to happen for even Ava as well. I know she's a bit green, but she, you know, she creates... Uh, and completes the package of Go uh, Joe Gacy as well. So, you know, I, I really want something to happen with Joe Gacy. What that's going to be, I don't know. But we carry on kind of talking about Joe Gacy in the next segment where Trick is looking at this sort of video package uh, that is uh, Joe Gacy and Ava Rain. And he's talking about, you know, it's crazy what's going on there. Like, uh, he understands what it's like to feel alone because he feels alone. Like, Trick Williams, he's all alone. <laughs> Melo's like, no, I ain't like that. I ain't nothing like that. Have you seen what's going on with me next week? That's crazy, right? You know, we're still boys and stuff. And Trick goes, yeah, I've seen it. And, you know, the Judgment Day can, you know, get involved and, like, you know, come up with some, you know, sus stuff, you know. So do you want my back? Uh, it's a jump to have your back. And Melo says no. Yeah, and he understands that, you know, Trick wants him to do his own thing. And Trick says, yeah, but I didn't mean it in that way. Like, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't want this to come to an end. Like, outside of these walls, we're still, you know, we're still mates. Like, we're still Trick Mellow Gang. And I, I, I'm concerned what's going to happen here is, ooh, theory on the spot. Is Trick Williams going to cost Carmelo Hayes the NXT Championship at no mercy? Something that I don't think needs to happen but something that I think might happen. That will be very interesting to see. Hey, guys, this is what you get on Outcasted, baby. You get my theories straight out of the mouth, straight there, live. Well, not live, because it's pre-recorded, but you understand what I'm saying. Anyway, shut up. <laughs> um, so it is, it is going to be interesting to see, number, like, number one, just to recap what we've just talked about, what's going to happen with Joe Gacy, seeing as though there's no one really in the schism anymore? What's going to happen with Ava Rain? Is the friendship between Trick and Mello, you know, crumbling? Are they going to turn on each other? I know they're not really in a, you know, in a tag team anymore because, like, Trick wanted to do his own thing. But is that going to result in, like, a rivalry between those two? Because I could see that. That'd be cool. Like, I think I said last week, I'd love to see a stand and deliver. Carmelo Hayes versus Trick Williams. That'd be dope if they decide to keep Carmelo Hayes in NXT. Carmelo Hayes versus Trick Williams would be an amazing rivalry. That'd be cool. Like, two friends, bitter rivals now. Yes. Yes, please. Take my money. Um, a match kind of where, where nothing happened. You had the Creed brothers here next versus Idris and Malik. Um, Malik and Idris look really impressive in this match, but obviously you're not you're not gonna have the Creed brothers losing the first match basically on NXT. It was more interesting to see that like all of the tag team division, like Humberto Carrillo and Angel Gaza, and the NXT tag team champions, the Tony D family, were watching what was going on in this match, seeing as though the tag team division is pretty close at the moment, and everyone is vying for those tag team championships. Obviously, the Creeds, like I say, come out with the victory, but then there's a massive brawl afterwards where everyone is trying to get to the Creeds into the ring and, like, security are holding everyone back. So it's going to be interesting over the next couple of weeks to see what's going to be going on with the NXT tournament. Uh, sorry, the NXT tag team division. I, I would like them, get my words muddled up, I would like them to have an NXT tag team tournament again. I love my tournaments in NXT. 
So give me an NXT Tag Team Tournament to see who's going to be challenging Tony D and Stax for those titles, baby. Um, we go backstage now to Becky Lynch telling uh, Lyra Valkyria that all of Ireland and all back home is very proud of and to keep up the good work. So that'll be interesting to see if that, like now that Becky Lynch is on NXT a little bit more, if that friendship develops or not, who knows? We now go to a Group B tournament match where it is Nathan Fraser versus Akira Tozawa. Now, unfortunately, Akira Tozawa, once again, not picking up any points. I think Akira's on zero, and it's a bit of a shame, but it is what it is, I suppose. Um, what happens in the match, like, it, there isn't really much to say. Like, obviously, Nathan Fraser picks up the victory here. But I think what more is important is what happens after this match, because Gallus get interviewed, and Joe Coffey's talking about how he dominated the whole tournament so far, that he was the odds-on favourite at the very start anyway. So the only person he's got to go through now is Duke Hudson, which then Duke Hudson comes and confronts him and says, listen, I've done, well, I've not done the math, but I've got other people in Chase U to do the math because I'm not good at the math. But basically what they've told me is, if I beat you next week, then it becomes a three-way tie between me, you, and Nathan Fraser, which is going to be interesting from my point of view, by the way. Is it going to be a triple threat match to see who's going to be, like, you know, win that to win that air bracket? And then go on to challenge the Group A winner. That would be cool. Um, I would like that, actually. I would really like that. But how is Duke Hudson going to win that match? How is Duke Hudson going to beat Joe Coffey? Is he going to beat Joe Coffey? I don't know. But it'll be interesting to see. I think that Joe Coffey, for me, is in a unique position here. Where, like, Gallus, like, are successful in NXT. But Joe Coffey by himself hasn't really been that successful whatsoever. Obviously, they got that suspension last year. That was like, you know, kayfabe. And he hasn't really done anything since NXT UK. Like the rest of the Gallus boys, Wolfgang and Mark Coffey, have, have, you know, won the tag team titles a couple of times. So I don't know what they're going to do with Joe Coffey here. I would like them to maybe give him a push. I don't mind Gallus boys. Gallus boys on top. Like, if, like because when they are interesting, they are interesting, the Gallus boys. So give me a triple threat match, maybe. Maybe Joe Coffey wins this. Who knows? But yeah, like, let, let me know what you think of the comments of the like the Heritage Cup tournament so far, guys. Are you enjoying it? Is it a bit complex for you? What what do you think about it? Like, let me know in the comments. We go backstage now to Mustafa Ali, who is confronted by Dragon Lee after an interview because Ali knows how the the match went down and he know that knows that the, the count was fast. Ali basically explained in the interview that you know he knows it didn't go down how he wanted to, but there's nothing that he can do about it. But he will give. Dragon Lee, the opportunity, the very first opportunity, if he beats Dominic Mysterio at no mercy for the NXT North American Championship. There's that, and basically, Dragon Lee says, I'm not done with you. Which, well, yeah, he just basically said, you know, you get the first opportunity. So, you know, you would you would think that you're not done with him. But, you know, th th that was a weird comment. We catch up with Wes Lee just before the main event where he is walking out of the building. And he says, I cleaned out my locker. And I said, if I said if, if I wasn't going to go and go to No Mercy, then you know, then I was going home. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going home. He's leaving NXT. So is Wesley going up to the main roster, or is Wesley just taking some time off for himself? Very interesting to see. Uh, we saw him in the back, like during the Trick Mellow uh, segment, like he was kind of like spying and like also cleaning out his locker, which was a bit weird. So yeah, this is the answer. He's he's leaving NXT and he's going home. He's taking his ball and he's going home, baby. Um, I, I just want to know how this is going to end. Um, I would like to see Wesley on the main roster. I think he's got a lot to offer, especially the SmackDown brand. I think he'd be great on SmackDown. It'd be really, really cool. Um, right, finally, guys, we get to the main event of the night. Becky Lynch versus Tiffany Stratton for the NXT Women's Championship. Now, we've already talked a lot about this uh, moment, so let's talk about the match as a whole. I just want to say how natural... Tiffany Stratton looked in the ring with Becky Lynch. Like, she didn't look out of place. She didn't, like, look like she was a rookie. She didn't look like she didn't know what she was doing. She looked absolutely fantastic. And like I was saying, guys, I think Tiffany Stratton, 100%, is the next Charlotte Flair in terms of that raw talent, ability, strength, you know, the way she looks. I, I do think she's very, very good. The stars are, is the limit for Tiffany Stratton in uh, WWE and on the main roster. And... Although people are not mad about, uh, sorry, people are not mad and also people are mad about the, you know, the title change. I think this could be a good thing for both of them, 100%. Um, I would really like to have a conversation about that, like maybe on the on, on the podcast this week or maybe just in the comment section because I will reply to anyone who wants to talk about it. Um, 
the ma the match here ends where Tiffany Stratton has got Becky Lynch down and she goes for the prettiest moonsault ever. She rolls through, which is impressive, by the way. But then she gets caught into the manhandle slam for the one, two, three. And there's a cool segment here where Becky Lynch has, um, well, Tiffany Stratton has like cleared the announce table, but Becky Lynch has managed to put her on the on on the table she jumps on hits a leg drop onto tiffany stratton gets her back in the ring another leg drop from the top rope but tiffany stratton is able to kick out um a couple of disarmor moments here or a couple of arm bars as well where tiffany stratton is able to counter get her up in the air and slam her to the ground beautiful power bomb by the way from tiffany stratton but maybe the most beautiful move in this match is when tiffany stratton hits a swanton and it's absolutely gorgeous the way she hits it. The hang time that she gets and the way she moves in the air is amazing. Tiffany Stratton once again showing how athletic she is and how great she is. And this is why people love the prettiest moonsault ever. It just looks absolutely amazing. But like I say, this is not a step in the wrong direction for Tiffany Stratton. Maybe she, she even replaces Becky Lynch on the main roster if, Be if Becky is like staying in NXT for a little bit of a run. Like, that'd be interesting to see. I wouldn't mind seeing her in on, on, on the main roster. But let me know what you think in the comments. Like I said, guys, this is the end of the NXT review for this week. Absolutely amazing that I was able to talk about this moment for you guys. I love covering NXT every single week. If you want to see more NXT content, just let me know, and I'll find a way to put it on the TikTok and the Instagram. Speaking of TikTok and Instagram, guys, you can find me, Lauren, Courtney, Ross, G, and Outcasted all on TikTok and Instagram. Go follow our personal channels and go and follow the Outcasted channel on there. You can also follow us on X slash Twitter if you like. That would be absolutely beautiful if you was able to do that. We'll try to build our, you know, platform on different places. So that would be really, really cool. Make sure you stick around for the podcast uh, this week on tomorrow. I cannot wait for that. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as a surprise to see what we've got in store for you guys. I cannot wait to just have a good laugh with you because like last week, it was really, really great. I love the momentum that the podcast gets and I love the momentum that this channel's getting. But with that being said, guys, this has been This Week in NXT. Review is done. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic Wednesday. Have a fantastic rest of the week. Peace out.